Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vimal Singh and in this particular video we will explore the third part of this series where we will be discussing how we are going to label it automatically, means auto labeling. So, so far we saw that what exactly sensitive information type is and then how we are going to create the label policy and publish it. Now today in this particular video we will see how we are going to automatically label it for the sensitive data. Let's get started and first explore what exactly it is and then we will implement it practically. We can think this sensitivity level like automatic seat builds for your data. So you don't have to remember to secure every files or emails. In Microsoft 365, the, uh, Microsoft does it for you. For example, if you create a document with a credit card or maybe any other sensitive information, it can be auto tagged as confidential and it will be encrypted without you do anything. So applying this label automatically will help you to reduce your, you can say errors, or you can say the mistakes which can be done by the user. There might be possibility users are not aware uh, about the company policy and what kind of data are considered as a sensitive data in your organization. So this automatic applying the sensitivity level help you in that case. So we can avoid the mistakes save the time and we will stay compliant uh, our user will focus on work not on the policy and remembering what files are confidential what are the sensitive they are not supposed to worry about that the most employee do not have every company policies right and they're not going to memorize it so there might be possibility they forget to label the files they don't have any idea this file is considered as or you can say it will be the sensitive information for the organization for example, someone in the HR saves a salary seat in one drive and they have not marked it confidential. They might forget it or they have no idea that salary should a salary seat should be marked as a, you can say, confidential. So in that case, what will happen with the data? We should have some automated approach that can automatically detect those sensitive data and protect it. So with the help of auto labeling, this will detect this sensitive data and protect it automatically. Even the user forget to do that. Don't worry. There is auto leveling and that will protect for you, for you, your data. This approach will save the training time. You don't need to train all the users. Hey, you need to know these are the list of sensitive files. These are the keywords. If you're putting it in these files, you must uh, label it as a confidential or highly confidential. You don't need to do that. You can also protect it from the leaks and ensure the data will be consistent protected now we can apply this auto leveling in a two way the first is client side and second one is going to be service side so if i'm writing an email with personal id numbers like outlook can suggest this is a sensitive information and label it before sending it to someone we can accept and change that label this is what we call it client side the second side, the second approach is going to be service side. So if someone uploads a customer data file to a SharePoint uh, even without labeling it, so this Microsoft 365 can automatically detect and label it as confidential. So this will protect even you forget to label it. So that's basically a service side. So even your data is in rest or in transit that will get protected. Now question comes. Do we need to use it both? I mean, both the approaches? Yes, it is recommended that you can use both the approach together. So using uh, the both methods will help you to cover everything. For example, if a sales team member forget to label a document while editing it, so don't worry, the service side labeling in SharePoint catches it later. And this is yours, nothing is missed, even at a skip. And it always helps you to stay compliant without disrupting your work and without taking stress. Doesn't matter, missed by the user, your data will be still protected. Okay, so we understood what exactly auto labeling is and how it is going to benefit the organization. Now let's see how practically we can configure it. Okay, so let's come back to Microsoft Purview Portal and there you will have information protection. Here we need to click on auto labeling. Now we need to create auto labeling policy. Okay, so at this place you will 
find the option to classify the information. We have predefined templates that we can use to classify it, or we can use the custom one. For example, if I'll go to the enhanced one, there you can find a lot of templates that can classify your data as per this. For example, if I'll go down and try to explore general data protection regulation, and as per that, it is going to detect any kind of information which is related to the HR business or tax or maybe the health, medical forms, employee, um, disciplinary action, invoice or legal affairs. So once it detects, it will apply this, you can say auto labeling policy on it. And it's not mandatory that you have to go with this one only. As you can see, we have custom options. For example, if I have to apply with this predefined template finance and related data, so we can go to that and it will detect your credit card number. But as you can see, this is US financial data. So if it detects any credit card number in a US format or US bank account number or the routing number, all this can be detected and this policy, labeling policy will get applied onto it. Similarly, we have this medical and health and there you can find all these detections. If it detects, again, apply the policy. Privacy related, like if I selected this template, which is Canada personally, uh, personally identifiable information. And as you can see, there are multiple things it detects. If it finds any document contains any Canada driver license or the bank account number, it will consider it's a sensitive information and the label policy will get applied on it automatically. But right now in our demonstration, we will not go with any of this predefined template. We'll go with the custom ones. So let's go to that place. Let's create a custom policy. Go with the next. Here you must provide the name. As you can see, this is mandatory fill. Description is not mandatory, but definitely provide it to have better visibility and understanding. Now go to next. Now we got the next option, which is assignment. Either we can assign it to the individual admin unit or we can go with the full uh, directory. So we can right now in this scenario, we'll go with the complete identity. I mean, full directory. Next here, we need to specify, or you can select the location where it will go and check those sensitive information, either from exchange, SharePoint site, or OneDrive accounts. Or as you can see here, by default, it includes all the sites, all the exchange, I mean, locations or the OneDrive location, but you are getting this option that you can pick as per your requirements. So for example, in our case, we are going to pick our project Obsidian site and we'll try to check something from there. As you know, uh, in this, our, you can say in the complete series, we are using this project. And so we are taking it for that reference only. Now at this place, we selected our project that you can see, and now we are going to select this one. I mean, site we selected. Now, if I go to the next, here it says set up a common or advanced rule to define it. The common rule means one rule for all the locations. You saw that location, exchange, SharePoint, and you can say one drive. So either you can have just one for all this location or you may have uh, different rules for different location. Like you, you can have one rule dedicated for exchange, one rule dedicated for one drive and the third rule dedicated for the SharePoint. So if you want to do so, you can go with advanced or you can just go with the one rule for all the location. Right now, we'll go with one rule for all the locations. Now here we are going to create the rule. So let's click on the new rule, give the name. Now there we are going to put the condition. So here I'll say content contains, what it contains, sensitive info type. And here we are going to pick our sensitive info type. If you remember, we already created this Research sensitive info type research and in development in the very first video. So, if you're watching directly this video, so I would request go and watch the first video how this sensitive uh, info type got created. So there, now we can check it out here with the high confidence or the medium confidence also will get detected. So, I said even with the medium confidence will be part of this and any condition will match. Now, if you go down there, we have more options to set this. For example, we can go to add condition. And as you can see, we are getting multiple options where we can say attachment or you can say file extension. And there we can go for a specific file extension that I would like to include in this. If someone is uploading a particular PDF or maybe any file or XLS or you can say PPDX that we are going to scan or if it detects something inside it, we'll let you know. I mean, the label will get applied to this. In this demonstration, let's skip that part. Now save this and go to next. 
Now here we are going to choose the label. What label should automatically get applied to this that we are going to create it. So I'll click on choose a label. And if you remember in the previous video, the second video tells you that how this label policy will get created. So we have already created this high, highly confidential research and development. So I'll pick that one and apply it. Okay, so we selected which uh, label policy will get automatically apply on the sensitive information that it will find. So we selected sensitive information detection, then the policy label policy, and this is automation rules. So automatically it will get apply on those. Now next, now here we are getting additional setting for email because my policy contains encryption as well. So that's the reason it is asking you as you read this part, it says, hey, the label you selected has encryption setting. And when it is applied to messages received from outside your organization, encryption will be applied when you designate a right management honor from your organization. This is fine. Let's not enable it because that's configuration is already there. So go without this. Now, here it gives you, do you want to run this policy in a simulated environment just to make sure the policy that you are expecting will work as per your expectation or not? Or you can just leave this policy by turning it off mode. Later, you can just, um, you can say test it and apply it. Right now, we will go into the simulation mode and make sure the policy works as expected or not. So go to next, first create the policy. Now the policy will get created. Yes, the policy got created now. Let's turn it. And there we got this simulation and under that we have this. So let's do this simulation. Here the simulation is already started. As you can see, it's running. And as I said, it takes around 12 hours to get this completed. So we'll wait for it. Let's refresh and see. Now this simulation is completed. Now if I'll go back to this place, items to review, here it will tell you, Okay, this is what we have detected. And as you can see, the sensitive info type is what? Research and development. As per this SIT, it has detected. If I go inside it, it tells you, okay, we got two with the high confidence, two with the medium confidence, two with the low confidence. Now, if I go and explore it, it will provide you the complete detailed information. If I'll go and expand it, the source will provide you the complete document and the contextual summary will provide you from which project it has find this. And now if I'll go and explore this metadata that tells you the complete metadata on the basis of the detection has been taken place. Now, once we simulated and we got to know that policy works as expected, so now we are going to turn on this policy. Let's confirm this. And now my policy is in active mode. Okay, so now you can see this policy is enabled. Once it is enabled, now what we will do, we'll go and test it in the real scenario like let's go to the teams application and if you remember this is the application where we uploaded some file to test our labeling in the previous video now what we will do is if i'll go to this place there we have open sharepoint site let's open the sharepoint site and upload some new document at this place and there we are going to upload new document yep can you see that this documents got uploaded and as you can see the sensitivity will get automatically assigned to it you can see that automatically this high confidential and highly confidential research and development that's the labeling policy we created and automatically that label is getting applied on this documents whatever we just uploaded to that place because this is the site which we if you remember project ops tn is the site that we are protecting and that we are protecting with the help of this auto labeling so you saw that the moment we upload it, automatically it got there. If I'll go and open this one of the document, yes, we do have option. The user, those who has the right can change this confidential, I mean the label. So if they'll go and try to change it, they need to provide the justification. And after justification, they can change it. Now let's check it out from Outlook point of view. So if I'll go to that place, let's, as you can see here, if we receive any from the external service and it tells you, okay, this is highly confidential. So labeling is automatically working at this place as well. If we'll come back to this Microsoft Poo view and if we'll go to this auto labeling section, this will help you to monitor and lets you know what are the documents got detected and what are the files we have where the label got applied, all this detailed information 
you will get to this particular place. Okay, so I hope you got an idea how actually we are going to implement automatic labeling. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in next.